If you're doing BCA methods this year, you need to understand this question before your first sac. In this case, we're given the graph of f shown here, and we're asked to find the rule for f of x. So what we do is we first analyze our x-intercepts and see not only the values of them, but also the nature of our x-intercepts, and then we build up our equation from there. So you can see we're given three x-intercepts in this case. The first one is at x equals negative two. So this means that x plus two is gonna be a factor to our equation. We could do exactly the same thing with x equals two. We know that x minus two will be a factor of our equation as well. Now these are just traditional x-intercepts, but the one at x equals zero is quite unique. That's because it's not only an intercept, but it's also a turning point at the same time. So we have our traditional factor of just x, which gives us a solution of x equals zero, but because we have a turning point as well as an intercept, this is a repeated factor, which means that we have x squared as one of our factors to our equation. So therefore we can build up the skeleton of the rule of f of x with this information here. So what we can say is that f of x is equal to x squared outside of x plus two outside of x minus two. Now the only thing that we're missing is some sort of information which tells us about the stretch of this equation. Now another word for stretch we might know is dilation. So how that's represented in this case is just a simple a on the outside of our full function. So what we need to do is just substitute an external point away from those x-intercepts and one of those points might be one comma square root of three. You can easily use this point as well. So what we need to do is just substitute in this point and then our only unknown is gonna be our dilation factor and then we can solve for our dilation factor. Now before I do that, I just recognize that ax squared x squared minus four is an equivalent way of representing this, just combining these two factors as a difference of two squares. So what I can then do is say f of one is equal to the square root of three. So when I substitute in that point, the only unknown is gonna be a, so therefore square root of three is equal to a multiplied by one squared multiplied with one squared minus four. Therefore the square root of three is equal to a multiplied by one squared, which does nothing, multiplied with negative three. Therefore, a is going to be equal to the negative square root of three over three, and now we know that only unknown, and we can find our full function rule as f of x is equal to the negative square root of three on three, x squared outside of x squared minus four.